understanding the biblical context of punishment. This is going to be a short presentation clarifying a few things. In a previous video, I pointed out the contextual nature of adjectives as related to Matthew 25, 46. And I've focused on this verse because it is the most popular proof text for eternal punishment. And that's exactly what it says. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. It must be true, right? But of course, I've pointed out that the Greek word for punishment in this passage, kalazes, actually means corrective discipline as opposed to retribution. Interestingly, all the words and metaphors of afterlife punishment in the Bible avoid the idea of punishment being retribution. And I'm going to do an upcoming presentation on that as well. The hurdle we face in English is that we are completely blind to the contextual nature of the Latin adjective eternal. So I gave this example to demonstrate the juxtaposed context being used in Matthew 25, 46. Although racism was an enduring part of early American history, God's love for all people is nevertheless an enduring quality of his nature. And this is exactly the kind of juxtaposed position of this adjective in Matthew 25, 46. These are two different contexts. We, we need to understand that. And the original readers of this would have understood this, but we're completely blind to it in English, unfortunately. So using the contextual reasoning of the defenders of endless punishment, unless racism endures for all time, then God's love doesn't endure for all time. So they want to impose a rigid definition of the Latin word eternal in this context, but that's simply not the meaning of the Latin word eternal. And I forgot to mention in the other presentation why I chose the word enduring for this example. The reason I did is because that actually is the definition of the Latin word eternal in Latin. But if we look up the word eternal in an English dictionary, we get this definition, having infinite duration, everlasting, eternal damnation. And this is hilarious. That is a completely circular definition of eternal being defined from the doctrine of eternal punishment itself. Um, because if I look up eternal in a Latin dictionary, we get this. Eternal means of an age, lasting, enduring, permanent, endless. So which is it? Well, it's all those meanings depending on the context of the subject. So if we are talking about immoral life in Christ, that shade of meaning being endless jumps out at us. But if we're talking about corrective discipline, collapses, then the primary definition of eternal, of an age, or simply enduring jumps out at us. Therefore, using the actual definition of the Latin word eternal, as St. Jerome understood it, who translated the Bible into Latin back in the 4th century, an English translation of Matthew 25, 46 should read, or could read, These will go away into enduring punishment, but the righteous into enduring life. And as you can see, this translation is perfectly reasonable given the actual definition of the Latin word eternal, as would have been understood by St. Jerome. It allows us to see the juxtaposed context of this word in the passage. And so we understand enduring means, okay, yeah, it's probably going to be a long time when we're talking about corrective discipline. But when we're looking at the concept of immortal life in Christ, enduring could mean enduring for all time, and, and does mean enduring for all time. And it's important to know, and this is what I'm trying to drive home, that when we're using adjectives in, in any language, there's always a contextual basis for the understanding, depending on what the adjective is describing. And God bless you. Thank you for listening.